G'day guys, Dizzy Dave coming at you once again from Down Under with another collection video for you guys out there. Now you may have seen I've already gone through my Disney Blu-ray and DVD collection. I thought it was about time to start introducing you to a few other aspects of my collection. Quite a few of you have commented on my bookshelves behind me. So I thought, while I've got a bit of spare time, why not introduce everybody to my Disney collection? I love books, I love reading, I love learning, I love looking at pictures. So I've got a huge collection of books of all different kinds of genres. I've got novels in another room. I've got books sort of all over the place. I've probably got another two bookshelves out in other rooms. And this bookshelf actually goes higher than this. So if you can imagine, there's this shelf and then there's a shelf above it. And then above that is another two shelves as well. It pretty much goes right to the ceiling. So I've got quite a few books in here. So obviously not all these books are Disney. Now the, the Disney book part of my collection is pretty much this shelf, this shelf, and then half of uh, this shelf that you can see down here. Uh, I've of course got some Marvel art and making of books here, uh, some Star Wars making of books up the top, and then a bunch of like Marvel and Star Wars comics here. I'm not going to cover the Marvel and Star Wars stuff in this video. Maybe another day I will, uh, I'll go through that section of the collection as well. But we're simply going to focus on Walt Disney animation books. These are mostly art books, history books, making of books. There's a few biographies in here, a few autobiographies, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to take you through my collection and just talk you through what books I have, my favourite books, what ones I recommend to you guys, what ones maybe I don't recommend to you guys. But yeah, I thought this would be a bit of fun. It gives me an excuse to go through my book collection as well. I thought I'd give you a, a walkthrough. Okay, so let's do that Mary Poppins cinema magic thing and snap my fingers and get all those books off the shelf so I can go through them. Ah, very good. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at Disney movie posters. This is a couple of years old now, and, uh, well, we're starting off on a bit of a rocky point because this book was completely disappointing. This was advertised as From Steamboat Willie the Inside Out. It was supposed to have all these great Disney posters from the beginning of time to modern day, and somehow they completely screwed it up. What was supposed to be like a comprehensive look at all the Disney posters, well, let's take a look at this. The silliest thing is two of the first posters in the book are Pearl Harbor and Oz the Great and Powerful. And then you go on to Malay. Jefferson, Snow White, Big Hero 6, Inside Out, Mickey Mouse Steamboat. I'm not too sure what is going on with this book. It's just like a mixed bag of all these random posters, both animated and live action, just completely out of order. The Pirates of the Caribbean, The Rookie. It's like someone's just got a bunch of posters and they've downloaded themselves a bookmaking program and they've gone import all posters. It's dropped them all in and just randomly they've gone, yeah, you know what, let's just print that. Not a great book though. That one so if you're thinking of picking up uh, a Disney poster book that's not your way to go next up though are two brilliant books the two Walt Disney Imagineering books this is the first one this was published in the mid 1990s it's written by the Imagineers and it's basically a, an art and making of book at the Disney parks this covers everything from Disneyland right through to uh, Walt Disney World it's a brilliant book it's got all these great little things like this in here so all these great little little documents and just fantastic artwork and making of and like I said it's written by the Imagineers and it tells you about the stories of the Disney parks in the words of the Imagineers. There's also some great like like huge gatefold things in here. This is an absolutely wonderful book. I had to get this one on eBay because that is well and truly out of print. And I got it because I actually picked this one up. This is the second book. This one, well, the first one's called uh, Imagineering, a behind the dreams look at making the magic real. And this one is a behind the dreams look at making more magic real. Again, written by the Imagineers. This was published in uh, the mid 2000s. And uh, as I said, it's a follow up book uh, containing information on. On, um, on Disneyland Paris and the Asian Disney parks. It also covers a few like little little things like additions to the Disney Disneyland over the years like the Finding Nemo ride. And again, look, it's just another brilliant art and making of of the Disney parks. If you love Disney parks, these two books are an absolute essential for any collection. 
And then I bought this book at Disneyland Paris. This was a book published for the 20th anniversary of the park. It's pretty much a similar thing, which uh, just covers sort of the history of Disneyland Paris. It doesn't have all like the little documents and multi-page uh, fold-out. It does have a multi-page fold-out, I'm lying. Right there, there's one right in front of me. I think you can only get this at Disneyland Paris. And it's great, it's got, uh, it's got the text in French and then English next to it as well. I wasn't a huge fan of Disneyland Paris when I was there but I wanted to pick up a souvenir and this is pretty much the only thing I picked up I had to have this book to go with my other ones this one here is a great book this is called Designing Disney by Disney legend John Hench now this guy was absolutely amazing he was with the company during some of their earliest animations and then later on became sort of head of Imagineering he was one of the key Imagineers who were designing the theme park attractions this book's sort of a bit of a behind the scenes of the Disney parks as well and it's all about how do you tell a story through a theme park and how do you tell a story through attractions and how do you design them how do you keep an audience engaged this is the heart and soul of Imagineering this book by one of the greatest Imagineers who ever lived if you're interested in this kind of thing this book's absolutely fantastic you will love this book and I, I love this book too then we got this one this is Disneyland through the decades a photographic celebration basically this is like one of those kitschy little books that you pick up as like a memento and it's sort of a history of the park and sort of just like a photographical essay of the park I suppose again it's more so just a book that you buy at the park and you take home as a memento it's not bad it was actually like this special edition one that they published as well which was ridiculously priced can't remember what was so special about it but it came in like a big box and all this stuff but I just picked up uh, this one at the time next up is the Disney Studio story this was one of the very first history books on the Disney Studios this is written by Richard Horace and Brian Sibley. I actually found this book at like a flea market they were doing in Melbourne. At Federation Square actually they have this market and I went down there and I saw this book sitting there for only 20 bucks. I had to pick this one up for my collection. This dates back I think to the 1980s. 1988. There you go. It's quite recommended if you can get your hands on this. The Disney book. Uh -huh. A celebration of the world of Disney. This is more so aimed at kids. It's like sort of an introduction to the world of Disney and Walt Disney and uh, all the films. It's a DK encyclopedia. They always publish these sort of things for, for the animated films and for some of the live action films. They do them with all the Star Wars movies always. I think it's really great for kids. It might be a little bit simple for, for older people but it's, it's, got, it's got some really nice pictures in there and some really nice information and stuff. I thought it was worth adding to the collection maybe one day I'll have kids and they can read this book who knows it's a decent one to add to the collection it was fairly cheap too when I picked it up all right now we get into some really really good books oh! This is heavy, so heavy. The Illusion of Life. This is one of the, if not the, seminal book ever written on animation. This was being written by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. And this entire book, this huge 575 page book, is all about animation. How do you animate? How do you bring cartoons to life? These are the two of the greatest animators of all time, writing about the animation techniques that they developed and they made famous in the early years of Disney animation. This is the most important book ever published on traditional hand-drawn cell animation. I have not read through it all, no way. I've read bits and pieces of it and uh, look at that, just some just beautiful stuff. Oh, uh, what I really like about this is Oh, how nice is that? That is really, really cool. Look, if you're interested in animation, you want to learn a little bit about animation, you want to be an animator, etc., etc., pick up this book. You will learn everything you need to know. It's, it's probably very expensive. If you are just going to buy one book on animation your whole life, make it this one because you'll never have to buy another one ever again. It's fantastic. And then one of my favourite books in my collection, The Art of Walt Disney. This edition is the From Mickey Mouse to the Magic Kingdom Revised and Expanded Edition. There were probably maybe three editions before this one and there has been an edition since as well which actually has Buzz and Woody on the back or maybe just Woody on the back and got a bit of a different picture of Mickey Mouse on here and again it's another one of those sort of art books again I have a sort of an older edition of this book uh, the newer edition has has Pixar in it this one doesn't actually cover Pixar stuff but the newer one does and when I say newer that was probably even published maybe four or five years ago but my favorite thing about this book I've been waiting to get a, a, an excuse to show this off 
The ACMI at Federation Square here in Melbourne had this huge Disney exhibition one time. Tangled was coming out in cinemas around the same time and they brought out animator Glenn Keane and producer Roy Connolly to Melbourne to do a series of talks. Now I bought tickets to go to all the talks. At the end of one of the days they did a signing. This is the most special book in my collection. So if we look to the right here, that's been signed by the legendary Glenn Keane and I did a little bit of a sneak and I said, uh, Glenn would you mind maybe just giving me a, a little sketch of the beast? And there he is. He gave me a little sketch of the beast. Of course, Glenn Keane designed the beast and uh, was the head animator of the character and I just love this so much even just now looking at it this had to have been 2009 I reckon so quite a while ago and on the other side you can see there's another signature there that's Jeffrey Katzenberg he came out for a talk for DreamWorks Animation another series of talks at, at ACMI as well and uh, I managed to get Jeffrey Katzenberg to sign the book as well that's a very special book to me couldn't replace that for the world. Now I mentioned the Disney exhibition at the ACMI. This is the exhibition guide for that. I picked this up. Dreams come true, the art of Disney's classic fairy tales. That was the exhibition. Again, it's just another like little art book. It's sort of, oh, that's the, uh, actually that's the exhibition map. Oh, there's my tickets still from that too. Uh, yeah, so this has just got great bits of artwork. This is all the stuff that was there at the exhibition. So I was able to get this signed by producer Roy Conley and Lella F. Smith, who's one of the curators at the Disney Archives and who wrote this book. And that's the uh, little ACMI brochure that they had around the time as well. I just picked it up just, uh, just as a souvenir as well. Okay, next up, The Alchemy of Animation by Don Hahn, legendary producer, making animated film in the modern age. Now, Don was obviously producing at Disney when there was that turning point of traditional animation to 3D animation. And this book is just sort of his take on how do you make an animated film in the modern day? How do you tell stories? What, what are the mediums that you can use? It's pretty basic. It's, it's more for beginners or people who are just sort of interested to know how it all works. It's a really good book again Don is a great great guy this is a book that's really really worth picking up for your collection oh now this next series of books are my favorite Disney books in history these are the Disney Animation Studios archive series books they did four of these layout and background they're just art books so it's just all this art in there all this different background art from Disney films there's this design one which is all about concept artwork and character and background design animation this one of course covers animation character animation these are basically the images that were then traced onto cells to become part of the film and then story this one's all about storyboarding how do you storyboard and uh, you know what goes into creating a story with all these different little pictures brilliant 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 books I love them so so much my favorite series of books maybe next to uh, Didier Gezer's they drew as they please series which we will also get to very soon this one fantastic book the lost notebook Herman Schultheis and the secrets of Walt Disney's movie magic by John K maker a great Disney historian who's written some great great Disney history and art books a majority of it is basically the making of one of my favorite Disney films of all time and that is Fantasia. This guy who designed basically all the special effects, came up with all the technological in innovations for Fantasia. He kept this uh, this notebook in the making, especially of Fantasia, but the notebook also included notes from earlier films like Bambi uh, and Dumbo, but it was mostly stuff about Fantasia and this notebook went missing for years, no one knew where it was and then they found it and they published it in this book and it's absolutely amazing it's this guy's complete book and you get this amazing behind the scenes of all these early Disney movies especially Fantasia because it was so technologically innovative that his notebook is so important to understanding how that movie came to be and how some of the earlier movies came to be as well this is absolutely fantastic have I said every book so far is absolutely fantastic I think I may have. Okay, next up, another absolutely fantastic book, Snow White, the fairest one of all. This is J.B. Kaufman, who's also written a ton of great Disney uh, history books. There's the back there. That's my little uh, little bookmark, little Mickey Mouse on there, which I think I bought, yeah, San Francisco at the Walt Disney Family Museum. This is one of the most comprehensive making of books you'll ever see, especially for an animated movie. This is like a day-by-day -day rundown of the making 
making of Snow White. It's got transcriptions from meetings. It's got literally, it's literally like reading a diary of the making of Snow White. And being one of my favourite Disney animations of all time, this book is incredible. If you want to know everything and anything about the making of Snow White, get this book. It's absolutely fantastic. And published at the same time, also by J.B. Kaufman, is this smaller book, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, The Art and Creation of Walt Disney's Classic Animated Film. Now, a lot of the same stuff's in here. It's mostly just artwork. There's a little bit of text in there, except this was published as a, a memento program from this exhibition they had at the Walt Disney Family Museum. So I picked both of them up because it's one of my absolute favourites. I just had to add them both to the collection. But if you just want one, fairest one of all, most comprehensive. This one's more just if you want to look at the lovely artwork. Then a few years after that, for Pinocchio's 75th anniversary, J.B. Kaufman again wrote this book on the making of the Disney epic Pinocchio. Great book, um, and it's pretty much the same as Snow White. You get like this complete rundown of the making of the film, artwork. It's really, really good too. I love this. Uh, it's all embossed, it's really nice. This one was also produced to coincide with a uh, Pinocchio exhibition. And then we've got three books that I was talking about. I did a review of this book here, Beauty and the Beast, Tale as Old as Time. And then I also showed off these two, uh, Once Upon a Dream and A Wish Your Heart Makes. These are comprehensive making of, of Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty with a little bit of information on the live action adaptations of them. They're great books, really nice. They're not as comprehensive as the Snow white one but it's it's a nice history of the films and the ideas and all that i look i really recommend them there they are great books too now let's get on to the second shelf all right let's do this again Okay, here we go. This one here, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and the Gang. Not a bad book. This is uh, Classic Stories in Verse. Vintage magazine art from 1934 to 1944. These were like mini comics, prose poems based on early Disney shorts. Featured in like Good Housekeeping magazine or something. Look, the book's not great, but uh, I thought it was just sort of interesting to have something like this represented in the collection. Look, it's not a bad book, but it's, it's, it's not a... Uh, it's not an essential either. It's another book by Don Hahn, Before Ever After the Lost Lectures of Walt Disney's Animation Studios. In the very early days of Disney Animation, they had all these great artists from all around the world who specialised in all different types of art come in and give lectures to the uh, to the animators. And they were all transcribed and they were all kept in the Disney archives. And then one day Don Hahn decided it was time to publish them all. And there's some great, great lectures in here. I haven't read it all, but I've read some of them. That's a really, really good book and it's really sort of interesting to read. I mean, these were the lectures and the tutorials that all the animators went through and it's sort of like you get to be in on that as well. You get to be privy to some great information. Mark Davis, Walt Disney's Renaissance man. This guy right here, he was behind some of the greatest character designs of all time. He worked endlessly on Sleeping Beauty and then uh, later on, uh, uh, he worked at the Disney parks. He was uh, pretty much well known as the guy who designed the Disney women. It's not completely a Disney book. I mean, it's got a lot of his early like personal artwork in there as well, body studies and all that stuff as well. It's a good book, but again, it's another really specialty one. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about Mark Davis or about the animators of that time period, this is uh, quite a nice small little book to, nice, nice to add to the collection. Now, next up, I've got two books on the legendary artist Mary Blair, The Art and Flair of Mary Blair, and Magic Color Flair, The World of Mary Blair, both by John Canemaker. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Walt Disney Family Foundation. So this was another one of those uh, exhibitions they had. And then John Canemaker wrote these book as a companion to that exhibition. Of course, Mary Blair designed all the beautiful artwork and designs for movies like Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan. And then, of course, designed the wonderful It's a Small World ride at Disneyland. Her artwork is uh, is unrivaled and it's absolutely gorgeous and stunning. This one here, again, it's another one of those cases where like the Snow White book where they published the larger book and then they just published a smaller book for those who just wanted just a little snippet. But in this case, both books were pretty much the same price. One's from uh, Walt Disney Family Foundation Press and one's Disney Editions. Uh, look, they both cover about the same stuff. If you're just going to get one, it's this one right here. This one's great and it's more comprehensive and again, about the same price. 
This great book here, The Nine Old Men, Lessons, Techniques and Inspiration from Disney's Great Animators. This is written by Andreas Deja, who is a great animator who worked at the Disney Studio in the 1990s, did some great character design, and uh, he's written this book about The Nine Old Men, the original nine animators who worked on all the classic Disney movies in the 1930s, 1940s, and this is just sort of lessons from them. So there's a small section on each animator and a little bit about their work, a little bit about their style and their technique techniques and uh, look it's really it's really 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 good book and uh, again it's worth having if you're interested in that period of Disney animation you want to learn a little bit more about the men who drew the images and then of course I mentioned these earlier Didier Gezes they drew as they please books this is going to be a series of six he's only published the first two. First one is 1930s second one is 1940s part one he's publishing 1940s part two this year and basically they're just all this uncovered artwork that Didier has tirelessly been able to find whether it be in the vaults or in family collections this is all unpublished Disney artwork from 30s 40s and I think he's going right up to the 1990s I spoke to Didier uh, late last year and if you go through my channel there is uh, an interview with him he is a lovely lovely guy hopefully I'll get to interview him again when he brings out his third volume but yes definitely this is going to be one of the most comprehensive Disney art series ever once uh, he's done all six of them and I'm so proud to have these in my collection and yeah alongside the archives books these are probably my favorite Disney book series ever, ever published so definitely get these these are so highly recommended and I've got a ton of these Disney art books they've published so many of them I haven't been able to buy everyone they pretty much publish one for every movie they do these days just artwork from the movies like a little art and making of I picked up Bolt I picked up Princess and the Frog really like I said I don't pick up every single one because there's just so many of them I pick up the ones where I really like the artwork and I think the artwork in the book is worth having and movies that I like to have represented in the collection as well so these are some of my favorite Disney animations this book completely sold out as soon as it was published and they had to do a second printing of it I think you can still get it now of course Moana that's my most recent one I did like a little review on this one on my channel so if you want to check that out you can check it out and then I've got two Pixar ones up which is just one of my favorite movies ever it's so beautiful and uh brave as well i absolutely love brave too i've spoken about this many times how much i love brave even though it catches a little bit of a bad rap bolt i think i only bought because it was that cheap i got it for like three or four bucks or something at like a bargain bookstore this one dali and disney destino oh man walt disney and salvador dali had planned to make a movie together it was going to be called destino and it was going to be based on the style of dali painting and Dali's uh, surrealist style they draw up storyboards for the entire movie and then just for some reason the movie didn't happen and then in the 2000s the, uh, Disney's nephew Roy E Disney managed to resurrect the film and they made it in the end and it's absolutely beautiful that's worth checking out that short this book's definitely worth getting too it's a little bit of a niche book I suppose but if you're definitely a Disney fan a Salvador Dali fan you're interested to know how these two incredible minds from completely different spectrums of the art world how they work together it's really really interesting so check that one out there's like a special edition of that coming out as well soon which is about $500 not going to be buying that and a couple of books I picked up at the Walt Disney Family Museum when I was in San Francisco this one is one of those memento photo books that you buy and you take home and you remember the wonderful times you had when you went to the uh, Walt Disney Family Museum got some photos of the museum and all that stuff in there this is a companion to the document the Walt Disney documentary that I, I talk about in one of my doc in, in my video for the Disney documentaries and it's just a little like snippet biography of Walt Disney's life it barely gives you any like really substantial information mostly pictures and then just a little bit of info on him I actually think it is the text that's printed on the walls inside the museum so it's like all that snippet stuff but yeah if you if you go there and you want a little memento these two books are definitely worth picking up otherwise uh, you you could probably skip over them. This here, Walt Disney and the World's Fair. It's actually CDs. It's got a little book in there as well. And this is all the audio that was recorded for the uh, 1964 World's Fair. So all the original stuff from It's a Small World, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, uh, Progress Land, The Magic Skyway. It's a Small World. That disc goes for, it's probably about an hour, that disc. So just imagine listening to It's a Small World for an hour. Oh boy. It's just an important point of Disney history and especially Disney Parks history. I had to have that in 
the collection. It's really interesting to listen to. This here, it's not actually a book. It looks like one from the office of Walt Disney. This was a member gift from the D23 membership. I didn't sign up. I bought this on eBay. And it's just all like this memorabilia, like replica memorabilia from the early days of Walt Disney. They rebuilt Disney's office and they sort of uh, just did replicas of all these things that they found in his office. And look, it's really cool. There's a lot of great stuff in there. I picked it up for only like $30, which is absolutely awesome. So I had to snap that one up on eBay. Uh, there's a new one they've just done. This was last year's member gift. This year's member gift is a uh, box. Again, it, well, this is volume one. So the next one's volume two, but it's uh, focused on the nine old men. And there's like replica artwork and all that stuff in it. I'm trying to get my hands on it on eBay, but the cheapest one I can find is a hundred bucks. This was 30. I'm not going to be paying a hundred bucks for it. If anyone out there is a D23 member and doesn't want theirs, and you just happen to be watching this, please write me a comment or send me a PM. I'm happy to buy it for you. I'm not going to pay you 100 bucks for it. I'm happy to, to sort something out with you. I really, really want that for this collection. So please, please let me know. This one is great too. Inside the Dream, the personal story of Walt Disney. This is like one of the only big format books I've ever published on the life of Walt Disney. It's fairly comprehensive. It's got all this great information on his life, on his films, on his projects, his parks, all that stuff. It's a really good book. If you want to know about Walt Disney, certainly check this out the only thing that annoyed me about this is I bought it on eBay it was supposed to be like new uh, it's a rental copy from some library which is really annoying it only got high it only got rented once October 3rd 2006 and obviously they sold it off because no one wanted to read it well it's mine now so there you go that's a really 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 good book and then this here, it's like a Life magazine, uh, like one of those book things that Life magazine published on Walt Disney, from Mickey to the Magic Kingdom. This isn't the first printing. This isn't like the, actually the magazine printing you could buy in a newsagent. They did like a uh, second run, which was print on demand. And they were running that through Amazon. Printed on, not a great stock, nothing on the spine. Uh, but I think the I think the uh, the cover is made of a, a nicer material. But yeah, it's a, it's a, I thought I just had to have this one in the collection. Um, it's just this, nice little um, book companion about Walt Disney's life, a celebration of his life in pictures and a little bit of text. Yeah, had to have that for the collection, definitely. And then, don't really need to talk about these. These are like little storybooks that I picked up at a uh, at a thrift shop. But yeah, I thought the artwork was, especially this Jungle Book one, was really, really nice and unique. And, well, I just ended up picking, picking them up for the collection because I, especially for the artwork, not so much for the storybook aspect, but because the artwork in them were really nice. Okay, so that's the second shelf done. Now we get onto this. There's only a few books down there, so please stick with me for another couple of minutes and we'll get through them and let's do the thing. Okay, first up we got some Pixar books. I love this. This is the art and making of Toy Story. How cool is that? Like a lenticular cover. I hate lenticular. Oh, I hate the sound. I hate the feel. Yeah, this is a good book. This is a art and making of Toy Story, the very first movie. Some great stuff in here. This is one of the very first art and making of books they really started publishing for these films. And yeah, some great information in here. Some great pictures. Definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of Toy Story. Got a couple of other little Pixar things here too. This uh, here, Story Animation Masterclass 2013. My university sponsored uh, two Pixar artists, Andrew Gordon and Matthew Law to come out and run a was it a two or a three day two day masterclass where they came out and one day they talked about storytelling the other day they talked about animation and this is the uh, little uh, little guide they gave us at the end the little workbook uh, that was written by the two artists I had to keep it for the collection just like a really nice memento of my time doing the masterclass which was fantastic and also just nice to be able to refer back to the, the masterclass I did with these two guys has helped me nearly more than anything else when it comes to telling stories and writing and everything. I studied at my university for three years and I learnt more in this two-day masterclass with the Pixar animators than I did in three years at university. So this is very, very valuable to me and I absolutely love it. This here, don't know why that's there, Toy Story, The Essential Guide, featuring Toy Story 2. I got that when I was a kid. Uh, that's just still sitting on the shelf. I keep talking about the ACMI at Federation Square. They always do these great exhibitions. And this is one they did many years before the Disney one, which was Pixar. 
Pixar 20 years of animation they brought out a bunch of animators for that and I got it signed as well um, I, honestly I can't remember who they were one of them was Jerome Ramft and I think that's his autograph or I'm not sure uh, but this one here was signed by Matthew Lawn. I asked him to do a couple of little sketches on Buzz and Woody there he was one of the guys at the Pixar Masterclass he was working on the development of Woody and Buzz on Toy Story so I asked him to give me those little sketches cheeky and then on the back we've got Andrew Gordon did, did this one for me he worked on the design of uh, Mike Wazowski from uh, Monsters Inc so I, I got him to give me a little autograph and a little uh, a little sketch of Mike there as well uh, so this book is absolutely fantastic obviously can't get any more it's just a little exhibition guide that you could buy during the exhibition this here is a great book I picked up from Mondo um, I'm not gonna open it up it's in plastic but it they've reprinted Mondo print all these great posters they have all their own art so they commissioned to do posters and stuff and all all the, all the posters they did over the years for Pixar were reprinted in this Birth Movies Death Pixar Commemorative Issue magazine. I had to pick that up. Absolutely awesome. Love it. There's some great artwork in there. Uh, and the cover is very indicative of what's inside. Okay, and then now we're at the very back end of it. We're going to have a look at some of these autobiographies and biographies I've picked up over the years. Walt Disney by Bob Thomas, an American original. It's a good biography. There's some good information in here, but I sort of get the feeling that it's... I've, I've mentioned this before. Why? whitewashed, a little bit wishy-washy. Uh, it's been published by Disney Editions and you know there is this certain image of Walt Disney that the Walt Disney Company would like you to see and really that's what this book is. It omits some of the more nitty gritty stuff but it's a decent it's a decent read if that's the kind of thing that you want to read about Walt and you don't like the uh, I suppose uh, more human aspects of Walt Disney but if you do want to know the more human stuff this book here one of my favorite books of all time Walt Disney the biography by Neil Gabler I think it's called uh, it's got a different name in the USA I can't remember this is the book that started this whole Disney obsession I love this book so much. This is an unbiased look at Walt Disney, warts and all. Again, Walt Disney was a man and he had successes, but he also had failures like we all do. He made some questionable decisions in his life, just like everybody does. And look, this paints him more as a human than as a figure, I suppose. This book just opened my eyes. I adore this book so much. Please, if you want to know about Walt Disney's life, Neil Gabler's book on Walt Disney is the way to go absolutely another one that's a little bit warts and all Disney War this book is so good this is about the uh, sort of the renaissance period of Disney animation 1980s 1990s early 2000s when uh, Michael Eisner was running the company with Jeffrey Katzenberg and a bunch of other guys these were the guys that really turned Disney into the en entertainment empire that it is today and they were all just well they're all real characters and you love each character and then you hate each character one character is the hero of the story one minute and then he's the villain of the story the next. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. Get your hands on Disney War, please. I love this book. This book is also great. Marty Sklar. This guy was Walt Disney's speechwriter and he was head of Imagineering for many years. Half a century he spent creating Disney's Magic Kingdoms. This is a great book about just sort of his methods in designing the Disney parks. Memoirs on, on working there. I really, really love this book. It's great. He wrote a follow-up, which is One Little Spark, uh, Mickey's Ten Commandments. Marty Sklar wrote Ten Commandments that you got to stick by when you're Imagineering. And uh, look, he, he just this this is sort of like a, a how-to book, sort of an inspirational, like, um, follow your dream sort of thing. And 75 Imagineers were interviewed for this book as well. And you get a little bit of their take in here as well. So those two books by Marty Sklar are great. You should get your hands on them. And uh, finally, this is the last book in the collection. Woo! Creativity Inc., another book that has been so beneficial to me. Uh, Creativity Inc., Overcoming the Unseen Forces that Stand and in the way of true inspiration. This is written by Ed Cutmill, who is the president of Pixar Animation and Disney Animation. Great book. This is less about the artistic side and more about the business side. How do you run a business? How do you keep everyone happy? We all know Pixar. We all know that they have like this great place to work and they're all happy and they all get along. And we know that they do team building exercises and you're allowed to ride bikes and skateboards through the building and everything. So Ed Cutmill's written this book about, it's basically a team building book, a business book, how to build a successful corporation of a successful company or a business where everyone gets along and everyone helps each other out fantastic book and it just so happens to have the background setting of Pixar great book I had that in hardcover and in softcover 
I have that in hardcover and in softcover. I think I got the softcover version uh, so I could make annotations and stuff on it. I'm going to read it again uh, and I'm just going to make some notes and stuff in the book itself. Uh, and then I can have this one just as my uh, nice copy on the shelf. Woo! Well, that's it. Well, that is it. That's the last book. Wait, no, that isn't the last book. I knew I'd forget this. I knew it. I have to go up to get this last book. So apologies. It's all the way up the top here. Oh man, it's really heavy. Oh, heavy, 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 heavy. I picked up two huge books here. Oh man. Oh, get this one out. Oh, this guy here. Whew, so heavy. Walt Disney. The Walt Disney Film Archives Animated Movies 1921 to 1968. Love this book so much. It's humongous. I'm not going to take it out of the box because it's huge and it's just, it's hard. I've done a full unboxing of this and a review of it on my channel. If you want to check that out, please do. This is my favorite Disney book of all time. It's quite expensive, but if you want to own one Disney book, that is the one to get. That is absolutely amazing. That's volume one, I believe. So I don't know when they're going to do a second one, but amazing book best Disney book that has ever been published without a word of a lie. All right, thank you everyone for watching. Oh, I am exhausted. I am, I'm feeling dizzy, uh, lightheaded, but thanks all for watching. If this is the very first video you have joined me on and you've liked what you've seen, please give me a little support. After the jump, hit subscribe. To all my regular viewers, thank you once again for joining me and to absolutely everybody out there. I hope I'll see you again soon. Until then though, guys, take care and I hope you have a magical day.